Zanny decides to show her hoe. Fatima thinks it's time to knuck a few bucks, but Karen is getting the last laugh. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Van, coming to you right here on Erica Van TV with another sister's video. And in this one, we are breaking down the mid-season finale, season seven, episode number 11. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my sister's content and conversations. And child, get you a snack, get you something to drink, because this is going to be a very detailed one. I'm going to get into what we need to get into. Feel free at any given point in time to respectfully jump down in the comments and share your thoughts theories conspiracies whatever um in the comment section down below and i'm going to do this similar to how we did our sister's keeper episode on this uh going character by character because the episode itself was chaotic af i don't know if i want to say the episode was bad i don't know if i want to say the episode was good well i know it wasn't good but it wasn't necessarily bad um all only thing i got for it is that it is definitely or was definitely chaotic there will be a bunch of subject videos coming as well jumping into specific storylines because it's very interesting to me how specifically like Daniela feels like Karen needs to go ahead and get over it or Danny and uh Zach right Karen needs to go ahead and get over it when it comes to this whole Fatima thing meanwhile there's word around town that uh Preston is going to be joining season two of Fatima hmm Daniela Zach you know Fatima is Zach's fiance so she's part of the crew now because she's part of family even though Zach doesn't actually want to speak to you doesn't actually check on you doesn't actually treat you like a friend and now he's befriending your ex now they're going to be getting together doing double dates or whatnot. Oh, but you're going to be perfectly fine, right? Because Karen's supposed to be perfectly fine. You know what? We're going to talk about that when we get into Daniela, which is going to be first up. But again, I'm going to have subject videos to deep dive into those things just so we can compartmentalize some of this information. And so that I'm not making a two hour sisters video. Okay. Hit that like button if you haven't already. And let's go ahead and start with Daniela. And let's start with the easiest part first. She gets a pearl necklace from her boyfriend, Tony, as a replacement for the one that she gave to the little girl, his daughter. Personally, I felt like that was trite. <laughs> she did not have to give it to her. The girl did not scam her out of it. I think that a lot of people, including Daniela, are blowing it out of pro proportion when it comes to Tony's kids. They are not bad kids. Every child, or not every child, because not everybody is everything, right? But children go through phases where they might be manipulative, or they might be sneaky, or they might do things that are untoward. That's what the fucking parent's job is to do. Teach them what's right and what's wrong this is the first time i'm assuming since um his mom and dad have separated and or divorced because it's not really clear if they're actually divorced um that a new woman is coming into their lives so expecting the children to have top tier behavior and to welcome danny with open arms and to just not have no issues with her not side eye her not have no feelings is utterly ridiculous for me looking at the series and then interacting with the fandom of the series it gets annoying sometimes because too many people pick and choose who gets to have feelings and who don't and unfortunately Whoever y'all decide to side with y'all's faves, they get to have all the feelings, all the responses, everything is justified, but then everybody else don't. And in this case, because Danny has now hitched her wagon on the back of Fatima, now she has a whole new group of, of fans that just think that, oh yeah, Danny is right about everything. Meanwhile, she's running through Atlanta completely and utterly wrong. She's wrong about these kids. She's wrong about Karen. She's been wrong to Sabrina. She's wrong to her damn self. She's dead ass wrong. But focusing specifically on these kids, it's like she has already had a disposition that these kids were bad that these kids were terrible before she even met them and it's all under the guise of she doesn't want kids or she doesn't want to be around kids if that's the case then don't date a man with kids i personally don't want to be a stepmother so i don't date men with kids you see how that works if i was to get into a relationship with a man with kids i immediately have to abandon any type of angst or issue that i take with children because i made the decision as a grown-ass woman to get into a relationship with a man with kids it is unfair to him it is unfair to the kids for me to bring in any of my issues in my baggage when I literally had the choice to not get in a relationship if it made me that uncomfortable and then why does it make you uncomfortable you have nothing going for you in your life Daniela nothing absolutely nothing and anything that is presented to you that could provide you a little bit of purpose could provide you with a little bit of impact if you do it well if you do it positively you reject and try to play that it's like it's the bad thing in your life you being a good role model to these kids will actually help you as well as help the kids you actually trying to be a positive force in these kids life would actually help you and and also help the damn kid but no the kids are damn hellions the kids are minions the kids were sent here from the underworld girl beat them for real and i don't like that 
Tony, I mean, you can give your girlfriend whatever you want to give. Tony is invested in this relationship. He's already invested into Daniela. I already made a, a comment last uh, video <laughs> for the last episode, breakdown how I don't feel like Danny is worthy, which I hate. It still turns my stomach to think about like referring to another woman as unworthy. But Daniela is literally the personification of that for me. Like the way that she moves, she moves so unnes unnecessarily nastily with so many people. And honestly, it has been so jarring to be in my comment section and to see how many people are coming to her damn defense. Because I'm just like, wow, if you identify with her this much, if you think that she's right, then this means that you are treating the people that you quote unquote love like this in real life. That's disturbing. That's disgusting. And I'm trying to pray for as many of you that I can because it's not right. But anyway, Tony gives her this necklace. She's continually getting rewarded with a healthy relationship, regardless of her being a completely unhealthy person. But you know, it is what it is. The biggest part that uh, Danny or her biggest storyline in this episode intertwines with her and Karen. Karen gives her a call early on in the episode to tell her about the mocktails event that Sabrina wants to have. And um, she's like, Danny, do not invite Fatima. Um, so Karen is going out of her way to make it clear that she's uncomfortable and she doesn't want this woman here. Danny is too committed to pissing Karen off and getting back at Karen for whatever y'all, some of y'all are saying because Karen is so judgmental, but I'm also, again, I'm going to make another video where I'm going to point to the fact and have receipts because that's another thing about me. I'm going to have a receipt, honey. Y'all don't like to have receipts. Y'all just like to throw out stuff. Uh, I'm going to point to with receipt exactly the points where where Danny has been way more judgmental, not only of Karen, but of all of the girls than they have been of her. They have handled her with kid gloves. They have taken her disrespect. They have ignored stupid comments that she has made. They have let stuff ride that I would not have let ride. Me and Danny, if we were ever friends or thought that we were friends at any point, it would have ended with me beating her ass because she's too slick out the mouth and she thinks that she can say and do whatever she wants because she's a miserable ass woman. And that's your problem. That's your cross to bear. Go to Jesus about it because all I got is fists. Anywho, Karen calls. They wind up getting to it because Danny's gonna invite who the hell she wants to she don't want to lose her job for cussing care or not cool say that you don't give a damn about your friend's feelings without saying that you don't give a damn about your friend's feelings and i talked about this extensively on our sister's keeper y'all the biggest issue because i i guess i have to keep reiterating it because some of y'all love to miss the point the point be sitting right in front of you you step aside close your eyes and keep walking right off a cliff looking goofy be proud of yourself I'm being facetious. Um, the point of this is not that she can't be friends with Fatima. It's that if you want to be friends with Fatima, cultivate that on your own time. Why in the hell would you force your other friend slash sister that you've been riding with since freshman year that you done held down for 20 years? Yana, 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 yana. Why would you force her to be amongst a woman who she has tension with. And not just because she has tension with this woman, but this woman has tension and animosity for her because that's another part y'all be missing. Y'all trying to put it off like, well, y'all know that Karen don't like Fatima. Fatima don't like Karen. And she proved it in this episode because why in the hell are you mumbling under your damn breath about how these babies ain't actually Zach's in a group of her damn friends in mixed company? Why are you whispering anything but you talking about if I wanted you to hear it, you would have heard it. That's giving tasteless, tactless, no decorum, classless. It's giving bird behavior. But we're not on Fatima right now. We're going back to Daniela. So why in the hell would you want to put your friend in a circumstance with a woman who does not actually like her, does not wish her well, feels feelings of resentment, animosity, whatever, towards her? Oh, you do that when this person is not actually your friend. We wind up making it to the juice bar and Danny and uh, Karen have choice words for each other. And I'm so proud of Karen. I'm so proud of Karen for like pointing out like, girl, I have been thinking about why the hell am I actually your friend? And at this point, I don't need it. You know what, Fatima, you can have all these hoes. And again, I'm proud of her for saying all of that because they literally <sighs> try to skirt over the fact that Karen has very real feelings and a very real lived experience currently that has to do with this woman. And whether Fatima is right, whether Karen is right, I'm not saying about who's right or wrong. The feelings are there. And if y'all supposed to be sisters, then there should be some kind of consideration for this woman's feelings. And there is none. Going back to my point before, Danny, if you really wanted to form a friendship with Fatima, you could do that shit on your own time. The only time that you want to kiki and hang out with her is when you're hanging out with the girls. That gives vindictive. That gives resentful. That gives you're using Fatima to make Karen jealous. Again, toxic, unhealthy behavior, whether it's in a romantic relationship or a platonic one, it can happen. And it's happening right now. 
Why aren't you asking Fatima to meet up with you for drinks, just you and her? Why aren't you inviting her over to your house to kiki and smoke weed? Oh, because again, you are using Fatima as a way to upset Karen because you got some type of animosity, some type of issue, some type of jealousy about Karen that you can't deal with because you are not a damn adult. You move through life as a damn child. And regardless of you being in therapy, you playing in Carisha's face talking about these damn kids when a real issue is that you are a miserable ass woman who can't figure out any purpose or uh, positivity for your own damn life. You run around here sitting yourself on a damn pedestal, but then also not believing in yourself. It's the weirdest ass oxymoron going, and I need you to find help for real, for real. At this point, you need to isolate yourself and really get down to the nitty gritty because you're a terrible woman, honey. And y'all also want to go ahead and point out how everybody got a problem when Karen got the bitches found out her mouth, but nobody said nothing when uh, Danny called Pam a bitch or calls anybody bitches. But we supposed to be up in arms when Karen says the B word because it's just the worst thing ever. She might as well have sent the nuke. Yeah. Moving through the second half of this season, I'm gonna need everybody to be fucking for real. And when I tell y'all, y'all ain't gonna be able to tell me nothing. Y'all ain't gonna be able to tell me nothing. Cause I said what I said and these hoes proved that, I, that they are exactly who I have been saying that they are, unfortunately. There were quite a few <laughs> statements that Daniela made that I just completely have a problem with in this episode. But at the end of the day, like I said, I believe that Karen got the last lap or is going to get the last lap. I think that it's brilliant that she's not only walking away from Daniela, but also this sister circle because it's given unhealthy, it's given unsupportive, it's given unnecessary. And at some point, you have to start to make decisions within your life for the betterment of your life. And some people are just there for a season and you got to let the season pass. You can't hold on to it. And that is basically what Karen was communicating. Um... I do want to note before I move on from Daniela, again, she's selfish and she's a terrible person. Karen says that she's selfish. I hated the comment that she made of like, oh, I'm selfish because you decided to let Zach knock you up. And I was just like, on first listen, that has nothing to do with the price of tea in China. Like, girl, you have two unrelated things. But then I was talking to another friend. I was like, oh, well, because she got pregnant. But this is not even an event about her pregnancy specifically. This is Sabrina's event. Sabrina, who was trying to get pregnant. I believe that Daniela is holding on to this Karen is pregnant by Zach or not pregnant by Zach. We don't know. As a trump card that she gets to throw out and use to spew her animosity and misery towards Karen's direction for whatever reason that we don't know of why she has issues with Karen um and I talked about this a little bit on our sister's keeper but it's very interesting to me how Daniela is so up in arms and so appalled because she gets judged and she gets judged specifically by the Karen character but then she or she says this because I don't believe that she does and I'm going to play uh a clip from last season just to like go ahead and provide y'all with a little bit of a receipt because while y'all like to make it seem like Karen is just so abrasive and so ridiculous she has showed up for all of these women in the most tender way and a lot of times and also telling them like it tell it like it is when she needed to but anyway not judging you okay it, it feels that way it's given judgment from me well that's not what this is okay Danny you just had an incident with a stranger saying this to you because we love you right she knows that does she you know that right yeah i'm really feeling the love i am you were uncomfortable with your weight and you was trying to find your confidence in all these dangerous situations. Mm -hmm. You let the wrong people know that, okay? Mm -hmm. And they try to take advantage of you. That's what happened. <laughs> this is great. Psychologist Karen might be my favorite. <laughs> okay. And? Um, so psychologist, had you considered that maybe I was using them the way they were using me? Yeah, you said that then too. Okay, shit. I think it's interesting how she's running from the judgment or she's fighting back from the judgment. Meanwhile, she's leading with judgment. Her only claim to fame or only issue or thing that she can dig Karen on is you don't know who your baby daddy's is. She said it a few episodes ago where she's like, I'm the one who has this problem and I'm so bad and I'm so wrong, but you don't know who your baby daddies are. 
Like, she was talking to Tony, and that's what came out. So, like, girl, your misery, your sadness, your jealousy is jumping out in every piece of dialogue that you actually have. Because what does her not knowing who her baby daddies are have to do with anything, let alone have to do with you? Somebody brought it up in the comment section. I can't remember right now while I'm recording, so I apologize. But I appreciate you for making this question known or, like, posting it publicly of, like, Danny, why are you offended that Karen don't know who her baby daddies are? Like, you are taking it like a personal offense, and you have taken a personal charge to now embarrass her or try to humiliate her at every turn, thinking about how she answered the phone when Karen called it today. She didn't even answer saying, hello, hey, friend, how are you? She said, do you know who your baby daddies are yet? Yeah. And y'all trying to tell me that this is a nice person, this is a good person, this is a happy person? If you believe that, you're just as fraudulent as Daniela. Point blank, period. <clears throat> Now, moving on, I'm going to go on to my good sis, Sabrina, real quick, y'all. We're going to talk about her because she has this mocktails event <laughs> and it's to celebrate her promotion. Honestly, I don't think that she should be celebrating it because while I was excited when Miss India came and gave her the news, it was completely deflated the moment we found out that she only got it because uh, Paige is gone. So y'all mean to tell me that this girl used to be branch manager, that she was doing a great job before. She got wrapped up in some bullshit behind uh, somebody who she had no control over. She loses her damn job ultimately to get it back, but not in the same position at the same store. And then you want to put her behind some raggedy white woman who has questionable sense and or behavior as well as fashion sense. The fashion sense part don't even matter, but I just had to say it. Anyway, and come to find out, Paige only got <laughs> fired because... Uh, Maurice lied on her. So basically, uh, y'all didn't believe that Sabrina actually deserves this job. In all honesty, Sabrina should have quit. Sabrina should have took her talents elsewhere because she is not appreciated at this place. And I can't be excited for her. So at this point, I'm not pissed that the mocktails to celebrate your promotion have gone to sh because girl, your job is gonna go to sh as well. It's gonna evaporate, evaporate as quickly as it materialized because it's not built on your actual work ethic and you deserving it. It's literally built on, uh, consequence of the person that they wanted being eliminated hate that for you and to go on at this particular <laughs> mocktails event sabrina tries to say something but it's nowhere near enough because daniela needed to be checked fatima needed to be checked and there was no checking being done at the end she's like oh nobody's gonna go check on uh karen you ain't running after her ass why are you looking at frick frack and fro to do something, to apologize, to make it okay with Karen, you all typically, have typically, historically been the person who has lessened the blow, who has shown up for Karen in a very real way, and your ass is still planted in this seat as well. So it's given very much so that you have also picked the side too. And unfortunately, sometimes you gotta throw the baby out with the bathwater, so Sabrina, your ass gotta go because you might not be the most disloyal friend, but you also are too passive you're too neutral, and when people are actually attacking you and your friend, you can't be neutral. You're either going to defend yourself or you're going to allow them to destroy you. And unfortunately, you have an unnatural allegiance to losers, i.e. Danny, and it's going to destroy you. But shout out to her and Rich, who looks so damn good in this episode, y'all. With more and more episodes and seeing them as her rag, it's just going to help me want to root for them more. And it just sucks because he don't want kids. And she's going to have to give up the fact that she wants kids to stay with this man. And I don't think that, that he's worth it. But they also give good vibes. They give, like, stunning couple. They give, they look like they know each other. And this one thing, this one thing is going to be their demise. All right, moving on. Let's talk about Lil Miss Andy. I already have been saying in my breakdowns that I'm tired of Andrea Barnes crying, whining. Girl, go litigate something or shut the hell up. That's all I got. That's really all I got. Hayden worms his way into her case, worms his way into being co-counsel, but he wouldn't have been able to worm his way into being her co-counsel if she actually did her damn due diligence and she wasn't so stuck up under Jordan's ass. If you were actually doing your job and litigating because you want to be named partner so damn bad, but yet you did not go and research the fact that her previous uh, um, legal representation had her husband sign something that's going to basically help y'all make sure that he don't get her money now that this damn marriage is dissolving is beyond me that to me seems like the first place that you would damn start but you too busy in here skipping because Jordan had cracked your back 82 different ways not realizing that you need to be prioritizing this billion dollar client now miss marie i'm gonna also need you to chill out honey because ain't nobody working on your schedule just because these are my business hours this is where i will be here you can have access to me from this time to this time andy stand up 
find some confidence and some self-esteem because while Miss uh, Marie has a bunch of money and a lot of power and she could put you in a position if this case gets won um, to look very great, she also don't respect weakness, honey. And you're giving weakness, baby girl. And again, just stop whining. And now, take the damn help. Hayden came with good information. He wants to ultimately see you <laughs> see your decline. But right now, y'all have a mutual enemy in Miss Marie's ex-husband or soon-to-be ex-husband. Work with him. Learn how Hayden works. Pick up off of what he puts down because at the end of the day, Hayden is still a good damn attorney. Figure out a way to use this to your benefit and stop crying. That's all I got for Andy. Stop your ass crying. And also, don't go see Gary no more. Especially, don't go see Gary with Fatima ass. Fatima, if you're not going to slit Gary... You know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till I get to Fatima. Because, Lord, she got on my nerves. Don't go see Gary no more. The whole exposition heavy ass scene of you. We know that you knew that she was onto you. Blah, 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 blah. Andy, you ain't going to do sh... What is you popping up with big badass Fatima? Gary don't speak Rockwallers. What is that actually supposed to do? If you believe that he really did something to, uh, to Penelope, why aren't you here with the police? Yeah, it's giving goofy. And he just gave goofy. This entire episode, cute but goofy. Girl, go ahead. I'm sorry, y'all. I actually am going to be breaking this up into two parts, which you probably could tell by the thumbnail and the title. But I'm in New York right now, running around, trying to balance things, trying to make content, doing a bad job of both because I'm trying to like also experience New York. So I recorded this first part and it's been sitting on my computer for two days. So I'm just going to release it and then I'm going to record the second part um, in the next like 12 hours and then I hopefully will have that up by Monday. So be on the lookout for that. I hope you all understand and give your good sis a little bit of grace. Um, I will be done traveling after Tuesday of next week. So y'all will be getting a ton of content Tuesday onward. But yes, this is the first part. If you want to hear my thoughts specifically on Karen and more about Fatima from this episode, then look out for part two, which is on the way.